future healthcare besties. Today, we're going to be diving into the most common questions, misconceptions, and myths when it comes to preparing for the ATIT's 7 exam. Whether you're a first-time test taker or you're gearing up to retake that exam, we've got the essential tips to help you study smarter, not harder. Let's get started. First up, the most common question I get all the time is how do I study for the ATITs and what is the best way to study? If you're brand new to taking this test, I highly recommend giving yourself at least a 30 day study timeline. It's also crucial to begin with a practice test. Why? Because it's going to help you pinpoint exactly where your strengths lie and where you need to put in a little bit more improvement. This focused approach makes sure that you don't just waste your time studying topics that you already know. For those of you who are my repeat T's test takers, I would recommend giving yourself that same 30 day timeline. But this time you're going to do something a little bit different. You're going to focus on reviewing that detailed scored report that the ATITs provided you after you took your exam. This go around, I don't want you to just memorize the materials. I want you to understand the why behind why concepts are the way that they are, because let's face it, the T's is a application based test. It's also really important, regardless if this is your first time or you're retaking your test, that you invest in quality study material. Don't just rely on any source. Make sure the material that you're studying is comprehensive and T-specific to the current version of the exam. Adding educational videos into your study mix will also be beneficial for those more challenging topics that you need a little bit more help with. How long should you study each day? Well, it depends on your schedule and your personal commitments, but I always recommend aiming between two to eight hours a day and really focusing in on those subjects that are going to help boost your score up and increase your chances of passing the T's. Remember, quality over quantity. Make sure that those study hours are productive and distraction free. As you know, there's a ton of resources out there, but we found tremendous success with the Nurse Chunk study guides. Test takers who have passed have seen scores anywhere between 84% all the way up to 98.7. But don't just take my word for it. You can see tons of comments and feedback from YouTube, Facebook, as well as our product reviews. The complete study guide is your one stop shop resource when it comes to a comprehensive review of what it's going to be on the ATITs. It includes all of your subjects, reading, math, science, and your English, and it also includes a 170 question practice test and a 30 day study planner to get you organized and back on track. If you're looking for more extensive practice, then our practice question guide is a must have. It has over 3,500 practice questions across all your subjects, complete with detailed rationales for each answer. And for those of you who want copies of the PowerPoint slides, we have you covered with our PowerPoint review. These are the actual slides from our latest version seven videos. So when we're talking about what is a good score when it comes to the AT ATITs for school, it's important to understand the scoring system. Scores are generally reported in percentiles, which compares your scores to other test takers. So what is a good score? Well, it ultimately depends on the program's requirements. So let's break it down. For many programs, the minimum scores that they want to see lie between the 60 and 70th percentile. This means that you will have to score better than 60 to 70% of all test takers. Scoring in this range typically will meet the basic requirements requirements, but it's really not going to make you highly competitive. If you're aiming for a more competitive score, then we definitely recommend reaching that 75th to 85th percentile. You may also need to pay special attention when it comes to individual scores, depending on your program, especially when it comes to math and science, because these subjects are typically weighed more heavily by many programs. Let's take a closer look at how schools are going to look at your T's in terms of ranking you as a candidate. Each T's test is going to provide an academic preparedness level, including basic, advanced, proficient, and exemplary. So starting with our basic level, you're usually seeing scores below the 59th percentile. Scoring within this level is going to indicate that you have foundational understanding, but it's also going to suggest that there's significant improvement that's going to be needed in order for you to meet the academic rigors of a health science program. Next up, we have proficient, and you will typically fall somewhere between the 59th and 78th percentile. Proficient scores demonstrate a solid foundation in key areas 
but it still leaves room for improvement. Students at this level are generally considered adequately prepared for most programs. So if you're looking to get into those highly competitive programs, then you're going to want to score either advanced or exemplary when it comes to your T's. Starting with advanced, those are the ranges between 79th to 90th percentiles. Advanced scores indicate that the student has a high level of preparedness. Students scoring within this range have demonstrated strong academic skills and are likely to perform well in health science programs without needing additional preparation. And then lastly, we have superstar status when it comes to exemplary. Typically, you're seeing scores greater than the 90th percentile. Exemplary scores reflect exceptional academic ability and preparedness. Students at this level have excelled when it comes to the T's and are expected to thrive in those highly competitive programs. Another common question I get is what do I need to know when it comes to the exam? The shorter answer is, is you're gonna need to know everything. You can always ask others what they commonly saw on the test, but as we discussed before, every test is gonna be very different. What one person saw, you may not necessarily see when it comes to the test. It's better to be prepared for everything than only be prepared for a few things. For a more comprehensive breakdown of what you need to know when it comes to the test, I highly recommend that you check out our complete study guide over on our YouTube channel. So how exactly long is the ATIT's exam? Each section has its own question total and minutes that you're allowed to spend in each area. Starting with the reading section, you're going to have 45 questions total and 55 minutes to do so. That's going to give you approximately 1.2 minutes per question. My biggest tip here is to make sure that you read the question first before you actually read the passage. Trust me, it's going to save you a bunch of time. Moving on to the math section, you're going to have 38 questions total and 57 minutes to answer those questions. That means you're going to have approximately 1.5 minutes per question. This section is really going to require you to have some precision and speed, especially when it comes to calculations and problem solving. So keep that pacing in mind when you're doing your practice sessions. After the math section and before the science section, you are allotted a time for a break that's not going to count against your time when it comes to the test. I highly recommend that you take that break to give your brain a little bit of time to kind of reset and get you ready for the second half of the exam. In the science section, you're gonna have 50 questions total and 60 minutes to do so. So just like with reading, you're gonna have 1.2 minutes per question. This section is going to cover a lot of topics, human anatomy and physiology, chemistry, life and physical science, as well as scientific reasoning. So make sure you have a good understanding of everything. And lastly, we have the English language usage section. This is gonna be comprised of 37 questions and 37 minutes. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You're gonna have one minute to answer each question. If you've learned anything from me today is that you do not wanna fall asleep on that English section. It tends to throw off a lot of test takers and those who have failed usually do so because that English section really threw them for a loop. So when you're taking the test, can you go back to previous questions during the test? So yes and no. Yes, when you're within the same section, you are free to go back and review and change your answers to any question. However, it's important to remember that once you complete a section and move on, you cannot return to that previous section. Make sure that you are completely satisfied with your answers in that section before you hit that next button. It's also essential that you answer all questions regardless of whether you flag them. Many test takers, including myself when I took it, will leave questions blank and if you run out of time, you automatically get those questions wrong. What I highly recommend is that you give yourself a 50-50 shot. Narrow it down to two questions that could be plausible and then select the one that your gut is telling you that's right. It's better that you get it right because you answered it than getting it wrong because you didn't answer it. So if you have time left over in one section, are you able to go back to another section with that additional time? The answer is no. Each section of the T's has a set time limit and any unused time does not carry over. There's some common misconceptions about the ATITs when it comes to calculator usage as well as breaks on the exam. So I'm here to set the record straight. Is a calculator available during the T's? The short answer is it depends. Generally, the T's software is going to have a built-in calculator function that can be used throughout the entire exam. However, some schools may choose to disable this function based on the testing policies. It's crucial to make sure that you're checking with the testing center or your school beforehand to see whether or not you're gonna have access to that calculator on test day. Will you be provided a break during the T's? 
Yes, there is a scheduled break between the math and science sections of the test. Please note, this is the only official break that will be provided when you're taking the T's. Any additional breaks will count against your testing time, so make sure you're planning accordingly. So how soon will I get my results? When it comes to receiving your results, the timing is going to vary a little bit depending on your program. Typically, you're going to see your results immediately after completing the test, regardless if you're taking it on campus, in person, or remotely from home. However, depending on your school's policies, you may see a little bit of a delay. Some institutions will hold results for 72 hours to process them thoroughly before releasing them to you. If you haven't received your results within this time frame, it's probably a good idea to reach out to your school or the testing center to see what the delay is. So how often can you take the test? Based on the ATI guidelines, you are allowed to take the test at least three times within a 12 month period. However, again, this can vary widely depending on your school and the program. Some schools may impose longer wait times in between attempts, sometimes making you wait anywhere between one week to 90 days. Schools can also limit the amount of times that you can take the test per year and per test version. It's important to check the specific retake policies of the institution that you're interested in to ensure that you're planning your studying and your test schedule appropriately. So if you were unsuccessful when it comes to the T's, do you need to retake all the sections again or only the ones that you failed. Typically, you must retake the entire exam again and get a new overall score. However, some schools will allow you to retake only specific sections, so make sure you follow up with your school on what their policy is. How similar are the tests if you're unsuccessful and you have to retake? Here's the deal. No two T's tests are going to be exactly the same. Each version of the test will have different questions in order to maintain test integrity as well as fairness. Some schools may cycle between different versions, and occasionally they may even be using older versions of the T's, but generally each attempt will present a unique set of questions. And lastly, the most common questions and statements that I get is I feel like quitting or I'm losing faith. I totally and 100% get why you're feeling that way. It's really tough when you're hitting a wall with something like the ATITs. Many times you might just need to take a bit of a break and recharge. Sometimes stepping away for a bit can really help clear your mind and reduce the stress that comes with this test. Remember, every nurse or healthcare professional has been where you are right now, facing the same challenges and the same doubts. Don't let this test define your ability or define your future. You are more than capable and this setback is just a part of your story, not the conclusion. You're not alone in this. Hang in there. Take it one step at a time. You've got this and I believe in you. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding the questions, misconceptions, and myths that come with the ATITs. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechunkstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources to help you ace those ATIT's exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!